Hello, I'm Mark Bohr, a senior fellow here at Intel. Most people know Intel as a manufacturer of microprocessor chips. What they may not know is that each and every modern microprocessor is made up of millions or even billions of tiny electrical components called transistors. Over time, transistors have been getting smaller and smaller in accordance with Moore's law. Because of this, computing and communication devices continue to get smarter, faster, and more efficient. Keeping up with Moore's law has never been exactly easy. For 22 nanometers, it became clear early on that continued shrinking was not going to give us the benefits we have come to expect without some radical redesign. I'm proud to say, after a decade of research, we've invented the solution. For the first time in history, the transistor has officially entered the third dimension. What exactly does a 3D transistor look like? Well, I'd love to show you. And in fact, there are more than a billion transistors on this single chip. Unfortunately, they are far too small to be seen with the naked eye, which means there's only one way to do this. Mr. Director, I'm ready for my close-up. Okay, so now I'm 20,000 times smaller. And just to give you some point of reference, this huge object off to my right, that's the chip I just dropped. And this large, unidentifiable object off to my left, that's a human hair, approximately 100,000 nanometers in diameter. Believe it or not, I'm still far too large compared to a 22 nanometer transistor to give you a meaningful demonstration. So, here we go again. Okay, that's better. I'm now approximately 100 nanometers tall, or about 20 million times smaller than my actual size. At this scale, a human red blood cell would be about as tall as a five-story building, and I would be just the right size to demonstrate some of the attributes and functions of a single modern transistor, like this one. For the last four decades, planar, or 2D, transistors have been at the core of transistor design and architecture. Here, we see a form of silicon that creates a stream through which electrons flow. The gate, which is made of metal over a high-k insulator, controls the flow of electricity in that stream. It acts as an ordinary switch, turning flow on and off. That is, if an ordinary switch had the ability to turn itself on and off over 100 billion times a second. Some key objectives in transistor design are to have as much current flowing as possible when in the on state for performance, to have as close to zero current flowing when it is in the off state to minimize power usage, and to switch very quickly between the two states, again, for performance. As transistors get ever smaller, one way to achieve this is to get tighter control by having the gate wrap around the channel as much as possible. This is Intel's new 3D transistor. With the 3D transistor's architecture, we replace the flat two-dimensional stream with one or more three-dimensional fins. The control is on all three sides of each fin, rather than just one, as in the planar transistor. We call this a tri-gate transistor, and its real advantage over planar is the ability to operate at lower voltage with lower leakage, providing an unprecedented combination of improved performance and energy efficiency. This breakthrough invention allows Intel to create transistors that are smaller, faster, and use less power than ever before, enabling a new generation of computing technology in every category, from the fastest supercomputers to the smallest handheld devices. So, that about wraps it up. All that's left is to just reverse the polarity on the shrink ray to bring me back to my normal size. Oh boy, that's gonna be a long walk home.